Hello, I'm back. This is the fifth installment of my tutorial series. Here we're covering some advanced tactics on this game with some, with a couple of finicky buttons that'll let your units do a lot more interesting things. And here we go again. Back for more, then, Commander. In this particular lesson, we'll be going over some of the more advanced play mechanics that will separate the men from the boys. From earlier lessons, you should be aware of the Allied Spy and some of his capabilities by now. Spies can disguise themselves as enemy units. Only scout units, the Allied Attack Dog, Soviet War Bear and Imperial Burst Drone can detect disguised enemy units. Spies and Imperial Shinobi can also infiltrate enemy structures. When you infiltrate a structure, it'll impair your enemy's base in various ways, which should give you the upper hand. For example, if you infiltrate that enemy reactor, the entire base will power down for a while. Go ahead and infiltrate the instant generator by right-clicking on it whilst your spy is selected. How's the disguise so I think it's a pretty good time to mention it. Operation underway. So here's all the various things that your spies can do. Now, as you can see, you can power down. You can power down your entire base for 30 seconds. The enemy's base, sorry. A couple other things you can do. You can temporarily shut off production facilities for that amount of time, in which they will not produce anything, and you cannot make them produce anything. That includes uh, Imperial Barracks, the Mecha Bay, and the and the docks. The Imperial mainframe makes it impossible to produce thing produce anything tier 3 in the Empire for that also, that also that amount of time. You can also infiltrate any construction yard to do to both scramble their map, which means they cannot use their radar, and you can also see see from any of their units for the rest of the game. It's very useful, spies can be very useful. Oh yes, one more thing. Um, super weapons. If you get inside one of those, you can reset their timer. I'm sure you've seen me do that with Shinobi multiple times. I'll see what I can do. Excellent, Commander. By infiltrating their generator, you've brought down their entire base's power, which in turn powered down their base defenses. That will certainly make it easier to destroy their base, stupid robots. Oh no! It appears the Empire of the Rising Sun is sending in a force to destroy your tanks. You'll need to retreat your tanks back to your base. A clever way of doing that is to reverse move them back to your base. This will allow them to continue attacking those enemy units while retreating to a safer location. To reverse move your units, select them and press the D key on your keyboard. Notice how your cursor changed. Right click on the target destination near your construction yard to order your tanks to retreat. Another benefit of reverse moving is that it keeps a unit stronger front armor facing the enemy. Most vehicles are more vulnerable from the rear and flanks. So when you retreat from enemies using a normal move command, you'll turn tail and take more damage. Reverse moving allows your unit stronger front armor to take the brunt of the fire. Good job, sir. Your units made it back and were able to whittle down those enemy tanks health enough for your base defenses to finish them off. Had you issued a normal move order back to your base, your Guardian tanks might not have fared as well. Incidentally, should the enemy catch you off guard with an attack, listen for audio cues from your intel officer and visual cues on radar to tip you off. To jump to the most recent radar event, just hit the space bar. Enemy commander just... Or to get back to your main base from anywhere in battle, tap the H key. You have quite convenient commands. I use the radar one quite often. Oh, pants. It looks like the Empire is sending another attack wave, but this time they've come at us with infantry. Your base defenses are strong against infantry, but with that many of the blighters, I don't think it's going to be enough. So, a good way to dispatch large quantities of infantry is to crush them with vehicles. Not all vehicles can crush infantry, so it's good to familiarize yourself with the ones that can. Small vehicles like your IFVs and Riptides are examples of vehicles that can't crush. On the other hand, larger vehicles like Guardian tanks and assault destroyers can crush a man like so many potato crisps. What's more, some of the largest vehicles in Red Alert 3 are big enough to crush other, smaller vehicles. Anyhow, let's crush those robots. 
Wait! You may wish to assign your tanks to a control group first. This is an important way of managing your forces. To assign units to a control group, select them, then hold the control key and press a number key. Do this What's now, please. Good. You may now select those units at any time by pressing the corresponding number key. You can also jump to the group by double tapping the key. Now please proceed with crushing my robots. Thought you'd never ask. To crush enemy infantry, select your guardian tanks and issue a move order behind the enemy infantry. You can also issue a force move command using the G hotkey or using the advanced commands tab near the bottom of the screen. Issue a move command to the designated location with your tanks now. You can use from 0 to 9 with, the, with this. Approaching Crush area. another tank. Uh, well, seeing as how that rising sun base seems intent on taking us down, let's go over some ways to get your units to protect your base without being drawn out by the enemy. All of your units can be set to different stances, which affect their behavior. All units start off in guard stance. <laughs> meaning they will auto-acquire enemies that come within their attack range and pursue them for a short distance if they try to flee. Once the dust settles, your units will return to their original positions. We need to have some of our units on defense for our base, but not pursue our enemies. To do this, we need to put them into hold ground stance. First, select one or more of your tanks. Now click on the advanced commands panel in the bottom right of your screen next to the unit portrait. As you can see, this panel reveals some additional controls for your units. Select the hold ground button to change your unit's stance. You can do all this with the Alt key. You can you can use A S D G. The hold ground key just so happens to be D. Guardian tank, good to go. What's on the agenda? Simple as that, you just change your unit's stance. Keep in mind that no matter what stance your units are in, any orders you issue will always be followed. Stances will only affect how units behave when not under your direct control. Now, take three Guardian tanks, not counting our field instructor, and move one to each of the designated locations and put them into a hold ground stance. Your yeah, hold ground is useful when you don't want the units to actually move. For example, they could be... They can get baited into an ambush. What say we also set up some base defenses? Each faction has a couple of its own base defenses. The Allies have multi-gunner turrets, for example. Select the support structures tab in the sidebar, build a multi-gunner turret, and place it near your tanks. Yeah, you've definitely seen multi-gunner turrets before. They're very useful base defenses. They can attack ground and air units, so they're mostly effective against against infantry and light vehicles, as with all the lower tier ones. Now these spectrum towers right here, you've seen these before as well. They can not they can attack air, obviously, but they're definitely more useful in the later game. Multi-gunner turrets change weapons if you put different infantry into them, though the rocket launchers they use by default should be handy in most cases. You can also build walls from your support structure's queue. To do so, build and place one wall segment. Then build and place another along the same row as the first. You'll see the build grid show green to indicate where you can form a solid wall. Careful though, each wall segment costs you, so longer walls are more expensive. Walls are useful for blocking smaller forces like those pesky engineers, always trying to steal your structures. Go on and try building a solid wall at the front of your base. In my opinion, the best thing to use, use for walls is against terror drones, because those guys are very annoying in the early game. So if you're playing with the Soviets, I heavily suggest building walls around your construct in around your ore refineries. I'm sorry. And this one's going to build more walls. Capital. Now, if the rising sun attacks, we'll have some extra defenses waiting for them that they won't be able to draw away from our base. And here they come. Yeah, your guardian tanks are invincible in this. They could probably beat most of these. As you can see, they've decided to retreat back to base, but your guardian tanks stood their ground and didn't continue after them. Had your guardian tanks followed them back, they most likely would have been destroyed by the Empire's own base defenses. 
Yes, the Empire's base defenses are quite impressive. You may need to use combined arms to defeat them. In fact, if you depend overmuch on just one or two types of units, you are bound to fail. Thankfully, it is easy to manage multiple types of units at once. Try selecting all your combat forces on the battlefield using the Q key. Something else you can do that I'd like to mention Ready, as always. is press W when you have one of your units to select Guardian all the tank, ones on, on the ones on the screen, or if there's nothing else on the screen, all units on the battlefield, or you can Guardian just double tank. tap them to get on the battlefield. Up, So, uh, Good. Just cute. Notice you have multiple unit types in the contextual tab in your sidebar at right. One type of unit in your group will always be selected. To cycle between unit types, simply tap the tab hotkey. Try this now. Switching unit types in this fashion makes it easier to use your mixed group special abilities without deselecting the group. We should also briefly touch on waypoint mode for its useful. Waypoint mode lets you queue up, move, or attack orders. To use waypoint mode, hold the Alt key while issuing move or attack orders as normal with units selected. Your units will complete the orders in sequence. This is also what the Alt key is for. Maintain talking field. As long as you need to, be, uh, to assign multiple now, orders at once. Now earlier we had mentioned how directional the, armor comes into play mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. battles. Another type of armor bonus your units can receive comes from an automatic reaction to enemy fire called suppression. Suppression only affects infantry units. When infantry units become suppressed, they go prone on the ground and continue firing. Suppressed infantry are slower, but more resistant to damage. Send your infantry into that city square there and attack that garrison structure. What's up, coach? Suppression, you only see okay. this when infantry end up under attack, as you'd expect. So I'll just order these them. guys to attack. We can take these fools. And javelin soldiers. And they're pretty good at attacking buildings, I've found. It's fresh and you don't normally, like, consider it, I'd say. As you approach the structure, your units came under enemy fire, and some of them were suppressed as a result of the enemy attacks. Due to this suppressed position, your units see. could absorb more damage and in turn deal more damage to that enemy structure, allowing them to destroy it. Oh! What was that for? That was for my robots. Well, good job, Commander. You now know some of the advanced tactics that'll surely make you a worthy adversary on the battlefield. And would you believe it? There are still more advanced tactics and commands for you to learn. Just dig into the options screen for a complete command list. But do that on your own time. This lesson's over, and there's only one more left. We're heading over to it now. And then we begin the last lesson. And that's over with all the main stuff mechanics. Next time we'll be going over another important aspect that we'll need in the campaign when I eventually do it. Your co-commander.